Avi, when some people think about the future, they think about the next election or something. Um, when you think about the future, you think about what's going to happen when our galaxy collides with our neighboring galaxy. So tell me what's going to happen if uh, you and I won't be around, but uh, let's, let's project our minds forward. Uh, our galaxy, the Milky Way, will be colliding with Andromeda? That's correct. In fact, whenever I hear the president give State of the Union, I wonder if there will be a comment about the state of the universe outside the Union. <laughs> and so far, the, to my disappointment, there was no statement like that. It's quite understandable that the president uh, would worry about the next election four years from now. But in fact, um, whenever we get a new understanding of where we are, we also can project better for the future. And we now have a better understanding of the universe at large. Um, about a decade ago, it was realized that the universe is accelerating. Its expansion, is in, expansion rate is increasing with time. Mm. And so if you look at a galaxy far away from us, it not only expands away from us, but the rate by which it expands away from us is growing with time. And what that means is that eventually this galaxy will run away from us at a speed that may exceed the speed of light. And we will not be able to receive any signals from such a galaxy. So if we were conversing with another person on a cell phone, then at some point in time, the, radi the light itself would not be able to travel from that person to us. And we will lose communication. Forever. Yes. So in fact, uh, if we were to continue to image a galaxy as it uh, accelerates away from us, we would see its image eventually freezing yeah. and redshifting and becoming fainter and fainter so that the galaxy will fade away fro with a frozen image. And the image represents the time when this galaxy crossed our horizon so that it, from that time to, uh, on, it were receding away from us faster than light. And that will happen, as it turns out, it will happen to all the galaxies outside of our local group of galaxies, the immediate vicinity. So in fact, one can run the movie forward in time and ask which of the galaxies that we see around us will stay bound to us and not participate in this cosmic acceleration. Mm -hmm. It turns out that only the Andromeda galaxy will remain bound to us. And not only that, but the Andromeda galaxy is approaching us right now. Right it's now it's about 2 million light years away or so? About 2 million light years away. Okay. And it's approaching us at a speed of about 100 kilometers per second on a collision course. And the question is, how quickly will it collide with the Milky Way galaxy? Yes. So we ran the simulation. We put the Andromeda galaxy at a distance and the Milky Way galaxy around us. and uh, attributed the most plausible parameters to those galaxies and ran the movie forward in time using a the most sophisticated numerical simulation that is available to us at the moment. And what we found is that within two billion years, the two galaxies will come very close to each other. So in fact, if you look at the night sky, at the moment what you see is a strip of stars that belong to the Milky Way galaxy. Mm -hmm. The reason that it looks like a strip is because the sun is one out of these tens of billions of stars that are sitting in a disk. And when looking from the inside of a disk, the disk looks like a strip of stars. Right. That's the Milky Way galaxy. Right. In two billion years, when the Andromeda galaxy will come close to us, we would see on the sky another disk, another strip of stars right. as big as the Milky Way strip. Coming. Coming yeah. towards us and appearing as big as the Milky Way disk. And then that will be the first encounter with Andromeda. We found that there is some chance that the Sun will be stolen by the Andromeda galaxy so that subsequently we would see the Milky Way as an external galaxy. Oh. But most likely we will remain bound to the Milky Way the solar system will be just kicked a little bit as a result of this first encounter. And the Andromeda galaxy will pass near us and then come back again a couple of billion years later. 
And once it comes... Like, like a pendulum or something, it, it would go... It would, because its own inertia would carry it forward, even though gravity would tend to pull it back. That's until, until it gets to a certain distance, and then it would come back. Exactly right. And there is an effective friction that brings the two galaxies together. Mm -hmm. And eventually, the two galaxies will mix. Eventually is how long? Uh, less than five billion years from now. So in fact, the sun will still be alive at that point in time. We found that the collision will end before the sun will, will consume all of its nuclear fuel. Now, when both of these galaxies, each of which may have as many, minimum of 100 billion stars, some people say as many as 400 billion star systems, many of which have planets, when they collide, it's not like two automobiles colliding, uh, because when they collide, because the space is, uh, there's so much space there, that the likelihood of, of, of stars within them actually crashing into one another is, is, it's is very, very low. It's very small, it's minuscule, but the stars will be mixed up in a way that instead of having two disks of stars organized in a plane, yeah. one will get a ball of stars that has the shape roughly of an ellipsoid. We see galaxies like that, they are called elliptical galaxies, and the popular uh, explanation for their existence is that they resulted from a merger ah. of two disk galaxies. So we see galaxies that are the merger products of such collisions in the past. This future collision will be different in the sense that most of the gas was already consumed in making stars right. within the Milky Way, right. so there is not as much gas available. But uh, in fact, each of these galaxies also has a black hole at its center. Oh. And when a collision like that takes place, gas is being channeled towards the center so that it feeds the black hole. And we see evidence for that in mergers that date back in time. Uh, we see uh, that whenever gas is fuel fueling the central black hole, there is very bright emission. And in fact, the emission from the accreting gas onto the black hole is more powerful by a by hundred times than the emission from stars in the whole galaxy that surrounds it. Okay. These are called quasars. quasars. Now, what happens ultimately? Will the black holes in Andromeda and Milky Way collide eventually? They will come together. And there is an interesting... Um, How dangerous will that be for Earth, assuming that the sun has not burned out uh, at that point? As it turns out, uh, most of the gas was consumed in making stars and therefore the uh, activity, the quasar activity that would result from the merger will not be uh, very powerful. Oh. So there will not be danger from that, but there could be a lot of X-ray uh, illumination from the center of the, of the Milky Way galaxy. Well, astronomers at that time will have interesting things to watch for. That's correct. Yeah. Um, the interesting result that came about only over the past year has to do with what happens when the two black holes come so close together that gravitational radiation brings them together so that they merge to make one single black hole. Mm. And people were able to simulate this process on the computer only over the past two years or so mm. for the first time. And it turns out that the remnant, the black hole remnant, gets kicked because of the uh, emission of gravity waves in a oh. preferred direction. And so it's likely that the merger remnant will actually uh, be kicked out, but then come back to the center of the merger remnant. Oh. The reason that this collision uh, is interesting is because this merger product of the collision between the Milky Way and Andromeda will be the only galaxy that we will be able to see in the distant future. Mm -hmm. And so tens of billions of years from now, there will be no other object on the sky for us to observe. There will be just this merger product, which we termed Milcomeda, the Milky Way and Andromeda merger product, and nothing else to observe. And in fact, I've been using this as an argument for NASA and NSF to fund uh, observing program for the next tens of billions of years, <laughs> because sub subsequently we will have nothing else to observe, and we will have to rely on the data that we collected up to this time. <laughs>